beginning today with wisdom from the Word for July 25th. Now, this may seem a little familiar since the, ver the verse that I'll be talking about today was part of last week's message. However, I'm focusing on just a few of the verses, so bear with me. Anyway, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. This is a really important verse to me. It's one that seems to always be on my mind. Um, so what I want to do for the purposes of this conversation is break it down into four parts. The first being, trust in the Lord with all your heart. So we know that we cannot trust our own heart since it's subject to be broken or to change. Um, I'm certain that we've all experienced that at one time or another. Instead, this scripture is compelling us to trust in the Lord with our whole heart. What this means is listening to what he says, reading his word, believing it, and acting upon it. And that's how we trust God completely. We take him at his word, and we acknowledge that he knows way better than we do. So over in Psalm, Psalm 37, 5 and 6 says this, Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. So what I understand from this verse is, if I commit, which means to pledge or bind to the Lord's plan for my life, then he's faithful to make our righteousness in him, meaning we'll be a reflection of the glory that is his alone. That sounds pretty good to me. Imagine... Imagine being Noah and getting the word from God that he is to build a boat big enough to house not only his family, but two of every kind of animal on earth. It sure seems like a big ask to me. We don't really know the struggle that went on in his heart upon hearing this command. What we do know is he did it. It took a long time and a lot of work, but look at the outcome. God worked through Noah in a mighty way, and he could do the same thing with us if we let him. George Mueller is another example. He, among other things, established an orphanage in the 1800s, firmly rooted on God's provision. One story from there was, uh, the story of faith was a morning when the kids assembled for breakfast and there was no food. So he instructed the children that they could not be late for school, and then he prayed to the Lord about their circumstances. Shortly there was a knock on the door, and there was the local baker, who said he was woke from his sleep with the thought that the orphanage had no food. So he got up, and he baked them bread, taught it, brought it to them. After that, the milk delivery man knocked on the door and explained that his cart broke uh, right in front of the orphanage. And rather than allowing the milk to spoil, he gave it to the children. Interesting when I think about these two, two men and how they were used by God. Now, number one, the baker, God spoke to him and said, hey, make some food for the orphanage. The milkman, he might not have been listening because he had to have a broken cart out of the deal. It's just an interesting thought for me. I'm sure that we've all heard similar stories of God's provision. All the more reason to trust him and know that he's a good God and he's going to, he's going to provide. So the second thing is lean not on your own understanding. I think it's a normal human trait to want to understand the why and the when of day-to-day -day life. I know that I do. More than I should, I'm sure. But God's will for our life has reason and purpose. And it's through his word that we can find the meaning and the principles to help us to discern God's will for our lives. So now we're going to turn to Jeremiah 29.11. Jeremiah 29.11 says this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Basically, it's saying, live by faith, because God wants what's good for you. I'm sure that Abraham was not leaning on his own understanding when he and Isaac were walking up that mountain to offer a sacrifice to the Lord, as he was commanded to do. How about Daniel? Same could be said about him when he was being led into the lion's den. The challenge is to live with confidence that God's way is always best, even when we can't see the whys and the when. Uh, number three, in all your ways, acknowledge him. 
So the word acknowledge in most Bible translations is yada, which generally means to know or recognize. So for us, we're being instructed to know God's ways and to recognize that he is the ultimate authority in our lives. In this, in this section, the NIV translation is, in all your ways, submit to him. The NLT says, seek his will in all you do. So this comes down to not just wearing a cross, giving God a shout out when something goes right for a change. While none of these are bad things, what we're really instructed to do is in all our ways, public and private, religious, secular, to acknowledge him, to know his word forwards and backwards, and to live a life that reflects that God is directing it. As we strive to this end, we're continuing the work of being transformed into the image of Christ. So, number four, and he will make your path straight. One commentary puts it this way. He will help empower us to keep our foot from evil. I'm sure everyone has heard the adage, the quickest path between two points is a straight line. Well, God wants to get us where we need to go in life. Of course, that's going to look different for each one of us. However, if left to our own devices, our road might be filled with many twists and turns. We might even end up in a ditch somewhere. If that does happen, I'm glad that God is there to help pull us out and get us back on the right road. Certainly the best course of action would be to stay in the middle of the road, on course with God. Or as Black, Blackaby says in Experiencing God, look for what God is doing and join in. The creator of the world we live in who sees the past, the future, and the present has a plan for our lives. Our part is to be connected to him through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and to allow him to direct us. So let's sum it all up. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, listening to what he says. Believe it and act upon it. Lean not upon your own understandings, not to intellectualize our circumstances, but to seek God's face and trust that he's in control. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Recognize that God is the ultimate authority in our lives. And he will make your path straight. He's going to empower us to keep our foot from evil. So thank you for watching. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to look at these verses, some of my favorites. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would speak to us, that when we read your word, that it would be real, that it would be alive, and that it would be encouraged to know that the God of the universe cares about us and, and wants the best for us. Help us to look for you in all things. Help, help us to, to see what you're doing. So I thank you, Lord, for this time. And I pray your blessing upon each one in Jesus' name.